Hello and welcome to another video. Today we will be making this awesome circle frame for Max's room. So it's going to be, I think, pretty straightforward, knock on wood, but let's see how we go. So as I mentioned, we're going to make the circle. Um, I've already made this circle, which I'll show you in a second on how I made this. And the idea is that I'll take, instead of plywood, normal wood, and cut loads of these little shapes. Um, the frame is supposed to be fairly thick, so I'm going to do enough for about six... I'm just looking at the wood. I, th I think six frame circles gives one spare. I think five of them would be thick enough, but we'll see. And I have to just cut out a load of these. But first, what I'll do... Um, is I'll show you how I made this. Hey, there we go, look at that. A perfect circle, it's quite large. Wow, it's so hot here, it's ridiculous. It's, I just looked, it's 10.30 in the morning and it's 27 degrees, I'm, I'm sweating like crazy. So, you know, so, sorry for any sweat patches. <laughs> anyway, so now that you know I've done this circle, the, the first step of, well, the next step that I need to do is very similar to the beginning of this circle where I need to make those circles, but instead of using the router jig, I'm now going to use this flush trim bit, if you can, there, you can make it out. So the idea is that the ball bearing at the top rides along my existing um, circle, while it trims the other one to the right size, which means I need to make sure that all the other circles actually are the same size and that this one can fit on top up nicely so that we can do that cut out. So I mean what could possibly go wrong right? So I think let's head over to the saw, spend like an hour or two figuring out the exact right angle of that 15 degrees and then another hour most probably figuring out how to cut the right pieces and then 10 minutes cutting them. <laughs> let's go. Um, I just made a horrible realization. All this wood that I bought for this project um, isn't big enough. <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but I just checked against my circle and one of those round wedges that I have to, the flush trim, doesn't actually fit. I need it to be wider. I need it to be at least like this. And I didn't realize that. So, now I've got one of two options. The first option would be to 
recreate the template. So create one out of these strips and um, pretty much start afresh. However, I'll be honest, there's one reservation I already have with all of these and that they're all wonky as hell. It's like measuring 15 degrees in a corner is one thing if one side is straight, but I'm looking, none of these boards are actually straight. So I think they're more for toys and, and less accurate projects. So what I'm going to most probably do is just make this circle out of plywood. That's, that's, that's all I can think of. I've got leftover plywood from a previous project. So I'm just gonna cut tons of pieces from that. It doesn't look too bad, the plywood, I don't think. Um, I do like, you know, it kind of fits into the style and if we're not gonna, it depends, worst case we can paint it, but I think it works fine if it's just plywood. Um, it's not really what I wanted, but rather than, you know, trying to recreate the whole template from scratch and all of that, I need to get this project done. I'm under time pressure. I have to also do the train bit this week. So I'm just going to strip down the remainder of the plywood that I have left over from the previous project and start cutting the pieces like this one out of that and we'll go from there. That's only enough for three rings. I need another three. So I'm just gonna cut the rest that I have. Um, I'll be right back. Well, it's getting hot. It's 28 degrees. I've opened all the windows and I hope to get a breeze in, but it kind of feels like a hairdryer blowing in through that window. <laughs> but yeah, um, by installing an aircon, I don't know what I can do. However, here we go. Here's our circles that we'll be creating. I have obviously the one laid out. I should have just glued it, but I just wanted to test it. But I just assumed that all the others will work fine. So. I'm gonna glue that together and then I've got another, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six circles that I'll glue together. Um, I only have three band clamps and only one like this. I hope the others will work as those ratchet ones, horrible ones. I really want another one like this, or you know those ones where you just pump? I'm gonna, I might invest in one of those for the next project, I guess, because I don't need them now. But anyway, regardless, what I will be doing is creating, gluing all these circles together, and I can only do three at a time, so I'll do three, three, three. Well, three and three, I mix six, right? So I'll do three today, and then most probably another three tonight, where this temperature should dry fairly quickly, so. Um, I could also use the actual template itself, although I've got like screw holes, and then I could maybe use it at the back. I'll see, I'll see how I feel at the end when we have them all together and how many I'd like to have. But yeah, um, just following footage will be a lot of gluing and clamping. I'll show you how to do one again. I mean, you've just seen it from this, but you know, why not do it again? You know, if you've done it once, why not again, right? <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Catch you later.
Good morning, and it's a new day, and here are my two rings. Well, actually, these are new rings. I've literally just glued them, because over there, if you look, I have all the rings from yesterday. So that's four new rings and the template. So I think the next step is to attach that template to the top of the rings and use the flush trim route a bit to, you know, make them into proper circles. Let's, I, I don't, there's not much more to say. Let's get cracking with that. Okay, I noticed a little bit of creep in my circle. It looks like it moved, which means we have to use more muscles that we can see. Ah, shit. You can see here. Let me focus that. You can see here, it's cut slightly in because it's coming apart. That is less than ideal. I think it would be better to just screw them together. I was trying to think if I screw them in, the only one I need to worry about is the face frame. Let me, let me quickly try a better way of doing this. Wow, it's getting hot. I need to be careful what camera angles I use. But here you can see, I mean, by the couple of slip ups when the frame started to move, which is sort of this side, which I'll just hide by putting it at the back. And this is really bad. I might not use this. I'll see. I'll do all of them and then we'll see where we are. But um, once I screwed these together, it worked really well. I'm quite happy. Now, next step is try and do the inside and see how that goes. I think that should work, right? I mean, what can possibly go <laughs> I'm just wary that if I muck them all up, this whole project is a fail. So I'm going to do the inside now, but I'm going to take my time and, you know, just... Take it easy. I don't know why I bothered using dust extraction. Oh man. <laughs> just, just have an idea. <laughs> the whole floor and everything totally, totally covered. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think that is an absolute success. I'm extremely happy with how that turned out. Um, it's brilliant. And now I only have to do it what? at least another three times. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get on with it. It's actually, you know what actually is amazing? Is the cut on the one with the router so compared to the template, because it's a new blade. It's so much better than what the template is, which might be a consideration also, because if, if we're using the template or not, well, we have to sand it anyway. But yeah, let me go and um, do all the rest and do like a mid, mid-circle mid tidy up, attach the next circle and just sort of plow through them. Um, and I'll see you guys at the other end. So I um, 
Finally finished my last circle right here. Um, I have all the others back there. I still have one left over here in, in this mess, but I, I don't think I'll be using it. Um, we already have a difference of opinion with management on how thick the ring should be. I obviously want to go for thicker because, you know, I made all of these circles. However, I think management might lean towards a thinner one as it's just supposed to be a decorative frame. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to ask, ask her for an opinion. Okay, so I have all the rings here nicely ready to go, but obviously the first thing we need to do is get all the impurities out. So some of, some of these areas have a bit of glue, some of them have the brown paper stuck. In. I want to make sure that they fit nice and snug together. So I'm gonna just give it a light sand um, of 220 grit or one, actually I'll go on 180, I think, just to get it off and make it flat. I'm not trying to reshape them. So I'm just gonna get all the pencil marks. I'll just do it once nice over so that they fit nicely. I mean, I could glue them together like this. I don't think you'd notice much, but you'll, you'll see in some of these slight gaps because the glue joins under 100%. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. And then take them all, glue them together. I, I thought of screwing them, glue and screwing them together, but I might have to do a cut into that later, which I'm dreading, but, but um, even if not, I think it's safer not to have any screws sort of buried in the middle that you can't see. The glue will hold just fine. I just need to wait longer with uh, clamps. Um, but yeah, let me get on with that. While the footage makes it look like the clamping process was fairly straightforward, it was a massive pain getting all those rings to align and I had to cut out a lot of footage. Overall, I'm very, very happy with how it's going. I think the ring looks pretty smart. Um, it'll still need some sanding, etc. And the next thing I have to figure out how to put shelves in it. I'll have to cheat somehow. I, I know how you should do it with grooves, but I don't really fancy cutting into my ring. Anyway, I'll figure that out later. Um, yeah, uh, I need to wait for this to dry. I don't, I can't really move it. So I think I'm going to have a couple of hours break. I'm really tired already. It's 20 to 12. It's still early. I still have a long day ahead of me. I might do some painting a little bit. I need to still paint one of the other projects. Anyway, I'm waffling now. Very happy with how this turned out. Happy that my plan kind of worked. And yeah, let's wait for everything to dry and then we'll continue from there. So what feels like hours and hours of sanding finally have come to an end. I'm actually quite happy. I know I've, I've mucked it up a little bit and there's a little bit of a, you know, golf ball type feeling, but very faint. I managed to sand most of it out. I gave it pass with the orbital sand on the inside as well. And it actually worked. Maybe I should have just stuck with that. But hey, the outside is baby smooth though. I really like it. So. Two things. Firstly, I'm sure some of you are asking yourselves, or at least I am definitely, is like, how am I gonna mount this to the wall? And the answer is these. These are hidden shelf mounts. Now, traditionally, you might recognize these. These are what we often have, and I was wondering about putting these in, but then I'd have to route in this bit, and you know, installing on the wall would be quite hard. However, I found these on Amazon. Now, the only downside is that the part that goes in the wall is very, very long and thick, but other than that, um, you know, there's nothing else you need. You literally just need to drill the hole into your piece. Now, it goes in quite deep, so it's nearly through the entire frame, so that is gonna be a very interesting challenge. 
but I think um, these will be the best thing for mounting this circle to the wall. Um, and then the second thing is the finish. I wasn't too sure what to go with. I've done a test here with Danish oil. It makes the, the edge pop really nice, although it gives a bit of a yellowy tinge. So I'm not sure if I'll go with that or rather just a standard mineral oil or a clear oil. Um, maybe even just a wax, but I do like how this pops quite a lot. So maybe I'll still go with the Danish oil. I will, I will see. I'll, I'll drill the holes and decide while I'm doing that. Do the finish and then the circle is done. Finally. And there we have it. The ring is complete. I'm extremely happy. Um, it's now just a case of going on, well, tomorrow, hopefully, or Tuesday to install this in Max's room. However, I still need to do the shelves, which will be a separate video. Um, it's probably shorter. I always say this, right? And I'll talk less and shorter, but let's hope it really is the case. But anyway, I will definitely blend in some pictures somewhere here, um, or maybe even the whole thing on how this final looks like in Max's room. So I hope you enjoyed. This was actually a fairly enjoyable project, um, be it, you know, quite a lot of little elements, you know, making all these circles, but I really enjoyed it. And if, you know, you want to make one too, please send me pictures and that. I think it's, it's a nice thing. It's something rare and I definitely now know why we, when we were looking for these, why they're so expensive? Because it is a lot of work to get it done to look like this. Um, and I even like the plywood look, I really do, I must say. I'm quite, quite fond of this. Anyway, please like always, subscribe and like, and I'll catch you later.